And this video is about completing the square. Now I've chosen about the ugliest possible example that I can give to you, just so we could see all of the steps. So why do we complete the square? Well, we do it to get from standard form, which this is in, to vertex form, which we'll see down here once we're finished. So my first step is I, I make sure that I, I focus in on the two terms that contain x. That's our 2x squared and our minus 5x. Now, I need to ensure that the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. So I'll have to common factor out this 2. So when I do that, <coughs> um, you'll see I have x squared left, so if I expand it, I would just get back to there. But now I'll have negative 5 over 2x. And so if I were to just expand, then I'd have to multiply, and the 2s would cancel, and I'd be left with negative 5, so we know that that works. I'm going to leave a little bit of room here. Plus 3. Now, the room that I've left was so that I could add and subtract a term that's going to complete a perfect square trinomial in here. The key to completing the square is creating a perfect square trinomial, and that's how we're going to get to vertex form. So the way I do it is I take the coefficient of the x term, which is, I'll just do this kind of off to the side here. So this would be negative 5 over 2. And I need half of it. So I'm going to multiply by a half or divide by 2. And so that's going to give me negative 5 over 4. And now it's square, so I need to square this term. I'm completing the square. I need to make a square with this. I take half of it, and then I square it. And so squaring that is going to give me negative 5 squared over 4 squared, which is 25 over 16. I'll leave it as a fraction. Now this is the part that I'm going to add and subtract inside uh, my brackets. So I've left enough room for plus 25 over 16 minus 25 over 16. And now what I should see is that this is a perfect square trinomial. PST. So because it's a perfect square trinomial, we know it's going to factor in our nice little pattern. It'll be uh, the square root of this, the square root of this, and this sign in particular. Um, so it's easy to factor this perfect square trinomial it will become x, because it's this sign, it'll be x minus, and the square root of 25 over 16 is 5 over 4. Notice, that's that same value that we got up here. So that value is repeated as, as the, uh, the root of that perfect square trinomial. This is not by chance, this is by design. We have specifically designed this perfect square trinomial so that that way it would factor to something nice. And because it's a perfect square trinomial, let's do the exponent 2. Now, we can't forget the rest of the equation. There's still the 2. But what happened to this negative 25 over 16? Well, it had to get kicked out of our set of brackets. And when it left, we had to look all the way over to the front and multiply by any coefficient. So we had positive 2 times negative 25 over 16. That's going to give us negative 25 over 8. <clears throat> uh, so 25 over 16 times 2 is negative 25 over 8. And we're going to need to add 3 to that. So instead of just writing this plus 3, I'm going to write 3 with a denominator of 8. So that'll be plus something over 8. And uh, it'll be 24 over 8 is the fraction that would get me 3. That's kind of nice. It's going to work out to something simple. So this is going to be y equals 2x minus 5 over 4 squared minus 1 over 8. So this is the standard form of this quadratic, and this is vertex form of this quadratic. And it is a little bit on the ugly side, uh, but we can see that the vertex is at... Uh, 5 over 4 is the x-coordinate, and negative 1 over 8 is the y-coordinate. And that's all for completing the square. Uh, most of the other examples will be much nicer than this one.